Dr. Spain, for the people that are not in the trenches doing these um, on a day-to-day -day basis, what um, is acute care surgery? And how is acute care surgery hot topics differ, differ from general surgery hot topics or, or any other type of hot topics? Yeah, we have a terminology and, and branding issue. Um, you know, we, for us, acute care surgery really means the, the all three components of trauma, surgical critical care, and emergency general surgery. And I think a lot of people, when they use the term acute care surgery, they really mean emergency general surgery, which is okay, you know, which is an important topic. But, but for us, you know, at, at, at uh, you know, teaching centers or large hospitals, that acute care surgery really is all three components, trauma, surgical critical care, and emergency general surgery. And to be clear, for everybody that is watching this video, the session of the hot topics has hot topics in trauma, has topics and hot topic in critical care, which in many places of this country and rural places there is provided by surgeons and hot topics in emergency um, uh, general surgery. So basically we're covering a broad spectrum of diseases in controversial topics in a really rapid fashion so you can focus and learn. And now is taped there so you can come back and take a look later and, um, see things that you didn't catch um, yeah. the first time around. Um, Dr. Spain, what do you think, like we all have a specialty, subspecialties and, well, no, not all of us, but some of us have subspecialties and we have also societies that are subspecialties. Why is it important that um, uh, as uh, surgeons, we belong to the American College of Surgeons and we participate in academic um, uh, activities of the American College? You know, in the last 10 years or more, I think it really has honed in on its message and its me or in its mission, right? And its missions really are two. One is to educate, right? And, and I think uh, for everybody, I think for a lot of the academic society we belong to, we're really focused on academic surgical practice and university hospitals, which isn't where the vast majority of surgical care happens in the United States. Um, so the college really fulfills a huge mission in educating, you know, surgeons in practice, you know, especially outside, you know, academic centers. So that's one big mission, education. The other big mission of the college is advocacy. And I know for a lot of people that term doesn't sound right and it sounds really political, but really what the college advocates for is our patients and our profession. And so you know, we, we, all, we all want the best thing for our patients and we can't provide that unless we advocate for our profession. I was listening to the talks and I figure out that, you know, uh, anybody that is super advanced, a professor of surgery or a very well experienced surgeon in the community can benefit as much as our fellows or our trainees because the talks are broad and they're uh, just very focused on what's important. Um, so I'm really proud of this session that um, was put together. Yeah, like, or, you know, just some of the topics too, because I, you know, I have to say like, you know, hydrantinitis. First of all, I, I can't even spell it correctly. I, I, I have to spell check every time. But you know, that's one of those terrible things. It's a, it's a um, you know, it's like an orphan disease and, and, and nobody wants to embrace it. And those, some of those patients, you know, really do have just a terrible course. And, and a lot of us just run away, you know, when we hear that diagnosis. But I do think like that is, you know, a great area, you know, that, that where we can really help patients partnering with, you know, dermatology and some of the new treatment modalities. So that was another great topic. And, and I will say just, just not just because you're interviewing me, but the whole challenging dogma, right? So circulation first, you know, throwing the ABCs backwards is a, is a big issue. And, and I also think like Dr. D. Severio, he's, you know, he tends to be a little bit of a, a rebel in this whole idea of pushing laparoscopy for trauma patients is something that's challenging, you know, the standard kind of dogma that we practice by. Well, I agree. I also think that the most dangerous uh, statement in science is say we're going to do it this way because we have always done it that way. And I think if we don't um, it challenge and question, we, we just will never advance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Spain. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And um, I'm, I can't wait to see what is the end result of our talk. All right. Thanks, Dr. Ferrada. Look forward to it next year.